Welcome to the Tale of Two Smitties. We're Cody and Laura, and if you're new here, let's catch you up. Before winter, we bought a school bus, a big, yellow school bus. Cody flew out to Phoenix with Laura's dad, Grant, to make the drive back to downtown Dallas. Since then, we've been plugging away on our schoolie bus conversion, turning a bus into a tiny home on wheels. We took out the seats, fixed the lock on the front door, took out a heater, put in a subfloor, and more. Much, much, much more. We've had help from both of our dads, Cody's dad, Wayne, and Laura's dad, Grant. So, if you'd like to follow along on our journey towards bus life, click subscribe and sit back, relax, and enjoy the tale of two Smitties. Oh, hey there. Welcome back to our channel, you guys. In this week's video, we cut another hole in the bus and we install a door that has both the city water, uh, street pressure, connection as well as the gravity fill for our fresh water tank. There's also an air vent on it and we'll show you that installation coming up. And if you've been following along with us either on YouTube or on social media, you know that Cody and I both took on some challenges this past month and at the end of um, talking about the work in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about how we did with those challenges. Um, it's really pretty outside so we're going to take the dog for a walk and why don't you guys come along. Right, so the first step of the project was to cut another hole in the side of the bus, which always gives us a little bit of anxiety. <laughs> a lot of anxiety. <laughs> So uh, we cut the hole in the bus. Obviously the bus is, has two walls with insulation in the middle. So we cut a hole on the outside uh, and then we cut a hole on the inside. Next, we had to drill holes for the screws. All right, next we had to apply some silicone uh, to seal around the door and install the door and screw it in. So it's time to get back inside the bus and attach the lines to the door. So the first thing we had to do was put a brass threaded fitting uh, for the street pressure. Now if you saw last week's video, my dad talked about connecting two brass fittings. Uh, here we're doing one brass and one plastic. So when you're dealing with plastic, you have to be a little bit careful, really careful, for not over threading or cross threading. Uh, where the threads don't line up and they go over each other and then you don't get a seal you can break the threads on a plastic fitting So you have to be really careful. Otherwise the process is the same and you'll tighten them down Then we install the the PEX line for that uh, street pressure city water uh, And you'll notice we've got a check valve on here. The check valve uh, is going to keep water from flowing back up this line and out the hole so when uh, when the pumps on and pumping water from the tank out to the system want to make sure that uh, water doesn't get pushed back up this line and out the door. The gravity fill is a clear hose, a flexible hose. You can see that going on here. Um, it's, it's a really tight hose though, so we had to use the heat gun uh, to expand the opening to get the, the pipe inside. Uh, we drilled our, uh, another hole in the fresh tank uh, and connected this gravity fill. Hold please, we've made it to the dog park. Sit. Good girl. Okay. Good girl. Let's go. <laughs> 
Where's all your friends? I don't think any of them are here. All right, next up is the air vent, and we talked a little bit about this last week, the need for it. So if you, uh, if you haven't seen that and you're not sure why you need an air vent, go check out that video. I'll link it in the card up above and uh, check that out. So we didn't realize that the door with these uh, connections was gonna have an air vent on it. So actually, we didn't talk about this last week, but when my dad and I started installing the vent, we were gonna vent it up the wall the way you often do in a house and uh, found out when the door arrived, it was delayed in shipping, uh, that it could vent right outside. So that's what this uh, clear hose is here, this little one, and uh, we got that installed. So next we worked on the drain for the tank. And so this will be used anytime we want to empty the drain. This way we don't have to pump all the water out. And so that would be used um, if we're going to be leaving the bus for a period of time or for any amount of time in the winter where the, where the tank could freeze because there won't be heat in the bus. Uh, and so we can empty the water out. We'll attach a hose on the backside and uh, empty that tank. All right, so the next part, uh, now we're moving on to the washer dryer connections. And so the first thing we're gonna do is install a HEPVO valve on the uh, drain. So if you're not familiar with the HEPVO valve, what it does is it allows water out and down the drain, but it doesn't allow air back in. If I can find a picture of what it looks like inside, I'll show it here. And so that's what we're gonna install here. And then we're gonna move on to the water connections. All right, so now it's time to put the valves on the water connection. So if you notice on your washer, the back of your washer, there's an on-off kind of valve for the water. And uh, that's what we're putting on here. This way, if we're leaving the bus, uh, we can turn the water off and prevent any spills or leaks if there's any, any problems. Okay, so we drilled uh, a hole for the dryer vent. and you can see that installed here. Uh, we won't install this other piece that my dad's lining up here until uh, we're ready to put in the actual washer dryer, but this is how the dryer will vent to the outside. All right, so we've got the stand pipe here for the washer dryer. It's a drain pipe. And then we've got the dryer vent to the outside. And that's gonna connect to this piece. Well, the other side of it, and this will go into the dryer. And then we've got the valves for the water. So we're all set up here. So like we said, we took on some challenges in July. I took on Plastic Free July and my single use plastic item that I completely removed was uh, like plastic water bottles. So that was not actually that hard because I use Swell and Yeti bottles all the time anyways. Um, but I was awoken to how much plastic and plastic bottles are everywhere. So that was really good because even though I just wanted to remove plastic water bottles, um, I feel like we also removed a lot of just plastic bottles in general, like honey, we went to glass, um, this garlic thing I buy, I went to glass, just a few little changes like that. So I'm excited to kind of keep that train going, keep the zero plastic movement alive in our lives. Um, the second challenge I did was the minimalism game again. 
as you guys probably know if you've been following our channel for a little while I'm a big fan and a big fan of the game 30-day game getting rid of a bunch of stuff so I did it again for the second time in three months which is amazing that we have that much stuff to get rid of um, and I think I'm probably gonna have to do it at least once more before we get onto the bus which again is insane um, speaking of insane this guy ran 50 miles this month tell the people about it Cody it was terrible. <laughs> All right, so we found a little shade for the pup. <laughs> so yeah, my challenge in July was to run 50 miles. Uh, I don't run at all, so I was gonna ramp up. I was gonna run a 10th of a mile for every day of the month. So on the first, I jogged a 10th of the mile to the dog park. Got an AC compressor kicking on, sorry about that. Uh, on the second, I ran two tenths of a mile all the way up to at the end of the month. I was running three miles and 3.1 miles on the last two days of the month. So, uh, only concern really was uh, not doing it. I, I knew I would do it. I knew it would be hard since I'm not a runner, but uh, you know, worried about like hurt myself or what if I roll my ankle and like I committed to doing this and now I can't. So, I uh, dealt with a little plantar fasciitis in the middle of the month. A lot of you guys reached out on Instagram to answer some questions I had and give me some advice. I really appreciate that. Um, and then also started dealing with some pain in my shin uh, and calf muscle near the end of the month. Uh, I had to switch to the elliptical and treadmill for a little while because uh, it had gotten uh, bad enough to keep me from running. Uh, but the Nike app wasn't counting some of those runs because they're manually entered and so to hit some of the achievements I was trying to hit, uh, I had to get out the last two days and run the last six miles and that was brutal. But uh, did it and uh, feel great and hope uh, that momentum can, can uh, can keep that hope I can keep that momentum I guess so anyway that was my challenge so congratulate this guy give a like to say congrats job well done yeah and uh, speaking of challenges if you guys have anything you're starting for August drop it in the comments below we're always looking for new things to challenge ourselves with so uh, what have you guys done this year uh, maybe it was during quarantine maybe it was uh, to start the year with a new resolution but drop uh, drop some ideas below things we can try next and uh, and we'll see what's up next so thanks so much for watching you guys. We always really appreciate seeing the views and the likes and the comments uh, more than you could ever know. So thank you, thank you. If you haven't hit subscribe yet, please hit subscribe. Helps us out a ton. And we love meeting and greeting all of you guys. Catch us next time. <laughs>